Grace and Mercy Ministries presents This is Your Season with Pastor Donald L. Watson. And now for today's message. I'm going to pass back your gifts or uh, Pastor Gibbs is going to give you your gifts. And then if you look on the back of the page that I gave you, it had prophecy, service, teaching, encouraging, administrative, ministry. And each one of those, there's a name by there. So whatever gift you have, you can go and talk to that individual, and that individual will help you to uh, understand what your gift is, and also show you where some more uh, information is so you can be able to have it. Amen? Is that all right? So I, I, couldn't, I can't make it any more easier for you than that. So for a topic this morning, God has placed everything we need in the body. God has placed everything we need in the body. When we think of ministers or ministry, what do we really think of? Uh, preaching, teaching, evangelizing. But ministry is much more than that. Ministry is the job of every Christian, no matter where they were or how they're living. Did you know that when you became a Christian, you were called into the ministry? The ministry of Jesus Christ. Christ. If you claim Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you have a ministry to do. Not all of you know what your ministry is yet, but there is a ministry for you. Some is teaching, some is music. For some, it's administration. But there is a ministry for you. Let us take a look at the scriptures. Uh, uh, take a look at the book of Romans, uh, the 12th chapter, starting in that third verse. If you've been coming on Wednesday nights, you don't heard the scripture. Maybe I will say about six, seven times we've been talking about this scripture for a while now. But in this particular scripture, for those who haven't heard it, is in the book of Romans, uh, the 12th chapter, starting at the third verse. Amen? Y'all kind of quiet. Y'all may have to speak to me a little bit today. Romans 12 and 3. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment and according with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body, with many members and these members do not all have the same function so in Christ we are many form one body each member belong to all the others we have different gifts according to grace gives us if a man's gift is prophecy let him use it in the portion to his faith if it is serving let him serve if it is teaching let him teach if it's encouraging let him encourage if it's contributing to the needs of others let him give generously if it is leadership let him govern diligently if it's showing mercy let him do it cheerfully. Amen? Some 
may be as good in that their ministry than others but it's still your ministry an usher just a just a real quick story an usher met an elderly woman at the back door of the church and asked her where would you like to sit she replied on the front row you won't you don't want to do that the usher said the pastor is really boring do you know who I am no I am the pastor's mother and he replied do you know who I am she says no and the reply came good <laughs> <laughs> don't mind me we all have a ministry to do and, 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 and not of our own choosing but of Jesus who sent us one of my questions was how many ministers does grace and mercy have one four everyone everyone nowhere in the bible does it say the pastor is the only minister the bible teaches all christians have a ministry and if we turn over to uh first peter chapter four let's look at that real quick first peter chapter four so that's not on the tape first peter chapter four First Peter chapter 4, starting in the 10th verse, it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So we all have a gift. Each one of us has received a gift from God. Amen? You actually, you receive three gifts. We'll talk about these three really quickly. The first gift, God gives, the first gift God gave you is a gift of eternal life. When you accepted Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior at that point God gave you a gift to make it into the kingdom of heaven Amen. you have the gift that you know that when you know where you're going if you were to die today tomorrow next week because you confess Christ you have a future and your future is solid and secure and you know that you're going to heaven the second gift that God gives you is the gift of the Holy Spirit. The moment you ask Jesus Christ into your life, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. The Bible teaches that he will fill your heart with God's love. Fill your heart with God's spirit. He said, I'll never leave you, nor would I forsake you. And when nobody else is around, the Holy Spirit is right there. God gives you those two gifts right off the top. No sooner as you confess Jesus Christ, boom, you got two gifts. 
Those are wonderful gifts. Anybody, anybody appreciate those two gifts? Any, anybody love those two gifts? And, and all you had to do was just confess Christ. And he gave you those two gifts. Now the third gift, God gives you the gift to use for his purpose. It's a spiritual gift. It's the gift that we, when we read in Romans, uh, if you look at that six verse, it says, having gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, and let us use them. When we become saved and become followers of Jesus Christ, he never, he never asks you what you're going to do. But what he actually does is he gives you a gift that as he gives it to you, he gives it to you in the ability that you're able to accomplish it and do what he is calling you to do. And, 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 and sometimes when we get saved and, and the question goes around a lot was, I don't know what God is calling me to do. I, I, I don't understand what my gift is. I, I didn't even know I had a gift. All I know was I confess Christ because they asked me to confess Christ. I believe that God is working in me and because God is working in me. I didn't even know that God gave me a gift to use for his purpose. But he did. He gave you a gift and the ability to be able to do it. And, and it's funny because, because before you had God's gift, you might have had uh, a natural talent. But, but that natural talent is, is something that you might have you learned, something you might have picked up on, something that might have just hit you. But when you give your life, God gives you another gift, and it's a spiritual one. And the spiritual one is separate than a natural talent. But sometimes we get those two confused. God has chosen you with the gift. Oh my God. That as you begin to work it, it's a free gift that he's giving you. That as you begin to do it, as you begin to serve him, as you begin to see the fullness of him and the joy, you realize that how good God really is. Because you're now walking in your purpose. You're now walking in your destiny. You're now doing the things that God has called you to do. See, 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 uh, 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 my second point was God gave, God gave you the gift to use. Uh, why is that important to know your gift? Well, I can give you five reasons why that is important. I I'm sure there's many more. God's gift shows his plan for your life. 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 4 and 6 says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There's different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There's different kinds of workings, but the same God works of them and all men. Your spiritual gift determines how God wants you to serve him. Once you understand what your spiritual gift is, it's a lot of questions you have will be answered. What is God's will for my life? What do you really want me to do now that I am a Christian? What is my ministry? How should I spend my time? All these questions begin to be answered when you understand your gift. Every Christian is called to serve the cause of Christ. But your spiritual gift shows you how to participate in serving him. If you have the gift to be a leader, God wants you to be that leader. If you have the gift of teaching, God wants you to teach. If you have the gift of music, God wants you to work in the worship ministry. If you have the gift of praise dancing, he wants you to work in the praise dancing ministry. If you have the gift of reaching people for Christ, then he wants you to be a good witness and work in the outreach ministry. 
In the scriptures we read a moment ago, we noticed it was a word there was difference. It is used three times. And, and the difference, different kinds of gifts, different kinds of service, different kinds of working, and every gift is in your life is unique. God does not want you to be a copycat. He doesn't want you to copy anybody else. He needs you to be who he called you to be. And you can't look at somebody else and say, I want to do what they're doing. Because God called you. And that's, that's why the word difference is there. Because God called you to something different, maybe, than what somebody else is doing. You may not line up like somebody else lined up. You may not have the education or the background that somebody else had. You don't even have the history that some folks went through. Because if the truth is told, you have never been homeless. And if you've never been homeless, how can you minister to somebody who was homeless? If you've never been strung out in drugs and, and been going through different programs, how can you really effectively uh, minister to someone else? So, so God calls each of us differently to the work that he has installed for us. See, some of us have been, has been managers for a long time. Some of us have know how to come in and work as a manager, work as a leader. But to take that and put that on you and you never worked as a manager or you never worked as a leader, you're going to fail. God would not put you in a position that you're not able to handle without him already making it a way for you to do it. See, oh, see, see, we all are saved, but we all have different gifts. And he calls us differently. Uh, each one of us is just a little different. You could go to any church because we all stand underneath the banner of Jesus Christ. But guess what? We're all different. We all don't operate the same way, but we worship one God. We lift up one God. My, my, my second point in that thing was, was God's gift builds your self-esteem. Lord knows. Sometimes our self-esteem needs to be built up. We, 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 done got built, we done got turned down, upside down, put in the mud. And, and, and if, if the truth is told, uh, if we ask anyone or any particular person when they first got to church or when they first started coming, we ask you, uh, uh, how do you see yourself? Hurting? You see yourself black? You see yourself under a rock? You see yourself in the mud? You don't see yourself as God sees you. So your self-esteem is kind of on the low side because people don't kick you, people don't spit on you, people don't talk about you, people don't ran you in the ground, and, and, and now all of a sudden you come into the church. You come into the church, and when you come into the church, guess what? God wants to build your self-esteem. Every human who's been saved by the grace of God, invited the Holy Spirit to live with inside of them. Now they have, uh, they want to be able to accomplish whatever blessings God has for them. Uh, this writer, Stephen Corbett says, people want to live, learn, love, and leave a legacy. I agree with a lot of that. But, but we sometimes we, we misuse that. People want to live. People want to learn. People want to love. But sometimes they don't want to leave a legacy. We want things the way we want them. But God wants to give them to us the way he wants to. 1 Corinthians 2 and 27 for now you are the body of Christ and each one of you has a part to play. 
You are needed. You are important. And God gave you a spiritual gift to bless others. If you don't use it, others will be cheated. God designed it to make it unique, your unique to give a contribution to the person God wants you to minister to. And when you take it and you sit on it, you're not only missing out on your blessing, but now you're cheating somebody else out of their blessing. They've been waiting to hear from you. They've been waiting for you. They didn't. Oh my God. Y'all don't hear me. We, we, we think that it's all about us. But God said, no, it's not about us. It's about him. So I'm going to give you what you need to go over and bless brother so-and-so or bless sister so-and-so to lift them up, to get them on their feet. They, oh my God, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't, don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. David Hubbard wrote in his book, Unwrapping Your Spiritual Gift, say, not only do we rob the church of a blessing, we rob ourselves of a blessing when we fail to, when we fail to use our gift. That was David Hubbard in his book, Unwrapping Your Spiritual Gift. God wants you to have joy of working with him and building uh, uh, up the body of Christ and making a bridge for people who need him to be able to get to him. Yes. Each child of God needs to say, I can make an important contribution to the body of Christ Amen. with my life. Amen. That's what God wants us doing. He wants us right there. Hallelujah. Glory my, my, my third point in this one. Y'all still following along with me? Did I, did I lose anybody? That, that third point. God's gifts fulfilled your life. And, and, and the book of John 5 and 15 and 8 and 11. These words are there. It says, this is how my father is glorified. And you becoming faithful and being my disciple. I have told you this so that you can share in my joy that your joy may be now complete. Joyful Christian service and the Lord and others. See, see, some of you have great encouragement. Some of you have great talents and administration. Our church, our, our, our church is gifted with men and women and service. And they know they can cook. They know they can cook. And they know that they can meet the needs of those who are hungry. They know, oh my God, when we get to talk about our church, we know we have folks that can help those that are hurting. Spiritual gifts are helping other people. God gives, uh, gives you one blessing to give to me. I, he gives me a blessing to give to you. And as we do that, God is thrilled how we go about helping one another to get where we need to go. Because in the experiences of life, we go through so much stuff that every now and then you need another brother. You need another sister just to give you a, a helping hand, just to give you a word, just to pray with you, just to worship with you, just to be able to lift you up. You need somebody every now and then that's going to talk life into you oh that that fourth one is is God is building God builds his church let me go there let me go to Ephesians 4 let's look at that real quick Ephesians 4 starting at the 11th verse Ephesians chapter 4 starting at the 11th verse oh, when we begin to look at this 
in the 11th verse, so Christ himself gave some apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for working works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up until we all reach unity and faith and in the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. We, we, he gave us different gifts to the church that we can build up one another and come together as one body waiting for Christ to return and working together. So when you come to church, you come to church to be equipped. You come to church to learn. You come to church to get it in you. Then as you get it in you, you're supposed to take it out. And begin to work what God has placed inside of you. You're not supposed to sit on it. Uh, the fifth point. God gives, God's gift brings him glory. Peter first, first Peter four and eleven, so that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to Him belong the glory, the power, forever and ever. The purpose of your spiritual gift from the Lord is not to bring you praise, but God. If you're looking to get the praise, you missed it. He's giving it to you for him to get the praise. When you go out on the street corner and somebody asks you how you got where you got and you begin to talk about yourself and leave God out, you're giving yourself praise. You're lifting you up. But God said, I need the praise. I'm the one who made a way out of no way. I, I, I'm the one who touched that heart of that person that was sitting at the desk that approved you to do something. I, I'm the one when you went in for that job interview and you talked to that person who was interviewing you. I touched that person's heart for that person to hire you. I'm the one. When your credit was all shot and you were still able to buy a house, it's because God stepped in. You had nowhere to go, nowhere to live, but all of a sudden, you got a roof over your head. All of a sudden, you got a little bread in your food. You don't understand. God said, I made a way for you to take the credit. What are you, crazy? We give the credit to him. Everything we have, everything we own, we know where our blessings come from. We give it, we give it all to him because he's, oh. you, know, you know, I said, I said, I said, I wasn't going to preach. I was going to try. I was, I was, I was, I was going to try. I was, I was going to try to cheat a little bit, but I guess I don't know what cheating is. Cause, cause, because, 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 because this done got good to me. See, 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 God gives you gifts to benefit the body. What does God want you to do with those gifts? So there's three things. One, he needs you to discover it. Uh, 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 he, he, he says he was telling he was talking to uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1 the Bible says eagerly desire spiritual gifts one of the marks that you know that you are a Christian is that you have a desire to know your spiritual gift and how to use it in serving God uh, uh, then he turns around and he says now concerning your spiritual gifts brother I do not want you to be ignorant See, 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 and then he goes, well, how do I know my spiritual gift? How can, how can I discover my spiritual gift? Well, there's several ways we can do that. And one of the ways was doing a spiritual assessment. That, that was one of the ways. The other one is, is examining, uh, uh, and, 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 and let, me, let me tell you, 
those of y'all who, who did your spiritual assessment, I can almost tell you how you went about doing your spiritual assessment, which was you sat down and you began to read the question. Then even as you begin to read the question, you begin to look back in your past. That as you look back in your past, you saw something that you was doing in your past and you and you marked that whatever reason, whatever way you needed to mark that because you have already experienced something that stuck out in you when you were doing your spiritual assessment. And, 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 and that tells you that, that you are right on the right track because one, you've been working with God and trying to figure out what your spiritual gift is. Do you know? That if you've been working in the church long enough and you've been doing different things long enough and you can walk up to a person and say, I don't know what my spiritual gift is and somebody else can point your spiritual gift out to you because somebody else been watching you. They've been watching how you work. They've been watching your attitude. They've been watching how you do things and you say, I don't know what my gift is. I just don't know, pastor. But you know what? Other folks know what your gift is. You have to stop and realize what, how God has blessed you. Because, first of all, you have a passion in doing something. You have a love to go about doing it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, if you've been called to be an evangelist, guess what? You're thinking about it every day. How can I go out and reach somebody? How can I go out and, and preach to somebody? How can I go out? Uh, Ron used to tell me that all the time. Ron used to tell me, I go out and preach to people all day long. Just preach. And I said, Ron, maybe you're not using the right word, preach. But, but, but guess what? He, he knows that he has a, 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 a zeal for those that are lost. He knows that he has a zeal for those that are in darkness. He knows that he has a zeal and he wants to help pull them out of darkness. See, 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 somebody else has, has a gift of mercy. And because you have the gift of mercy, you, you really want to help somebody who's been hurt. You really want to help somebody who's been torn down. You really want to be able to lift them up. And you really want, you just, if you could, you just want to take their place. Because you have mercy. And you understand who they are. And, and, then, you, and then you got somebody who's an encourager. An encourager is one that will, well, man, how can I encourage this person today? What, what, can, what can I do? What can I say? How, you, know, you know, sister, you really sunk that song. You, you, you sunk the roof off when you were singing that song. You know, you were really praying today. I, I mean, I just, I just love when I hear you pray. I just love when I see you working around the church. I, see, see, there's different gifts right here in the church, and we just have to learn how to use them. Uh, as usual, I walked away from my paper. But God says, God says we have to be able to, to not only to examine where we were and experience some different things. Cause, because if you only did one thing, you don't know if you're good at something else. So in order to get that full understanding of what your gift may be, you may have to go where you don't want to go. You may have to step out of your comfort zone. See, cause, cause, cause we all, we all done got comfortable, and, and, and some of us, we got so comfortable, we don't even want to get up. We, 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 we're, we're comfortable of coming in and just sitting down. We're, 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 we're comfortable of waving our hand every now and then. We're, we're, we're comfortable watching somebody else praise God, but, but every now and then you got to step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, you know, when 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 I went to Bible college, uh, uh, I was not planning on pastoring the church, but because I went to Bible college and, and because I I was following what God was leading me to do, I ended up coming to be a pastor of a church. And you know, I I, I don't I don't I don't messed up because I don't jumped ahead, but that's okay. It's okay, you know, because because once you discover your gift. Then you begin to work in your gift. And as you begin to work in it, now you got to learn how to develop your gift. Because if you're a good counselor, then you probably need to take some counseling classes. If you love to witness to somebody, 
and you're not 100% sure, then you need to partner up with somebody who knows how to witness with somebody. If God gave you the gift of singing and you're, and you're still on a shaky side, then you need to partner up with somebody who can help you to learn how to sing. God gave you the gift. You just need to learn how to develop it. And see, and that's a lot of times we don't want to do that. We don't want to take that extra step. We don't want to learn how to develop what God has given us. But God wants you to work at it. God wants you to be able to develop it because as you develop it, more people will hear you. More people will turn around and give their life to Christ. Now God can take and use you even more. Yeah. Yeah. The last one is deploy and use them. God wants you to use your gift. I mean, he, he done got you to the point where, where, where you had to, to uh, develop it. You, ha you had to, to uh, uh, begin after you develop it. Now you got to take it and you got to begin to use it. That even as you begin to use it, now, now God can step in and, and say, okay, let me sharpen your tools just a little bit. Because as I sharpen your tools just a little bit, you, you, you're going to go out. And, and, and when you go out, I, I, need you to be, I need you to be right. You know, uh, I think it was Paul. Paul, when, when God called Paul and knocked him off the donkey, uh, and he became from Saul to Paul, he went out in the desert for three years. He went out in the desert for three years and spent time with God sharpening his gifts. God wants us to spend time with him sharpening the gifts that he's given you. And he gave us all unique gifts. But yet we don't look at them right. We don't want to sharpen them. We don't want to work with them. And, and, and if the truth is told, 10% of the church do 90% of the ministry. We need to change that. God called all of us to work in the ministry, not 10%. Imagine, imagine, okay, imagine when I get home and, and, and I turn on a Dallas football game. I like Dallas. But imagine if only 10% of them play. If only 10% of them play, you know they're not going to win. They need the whole team in order to play the game. Not just 10%. We need the whole church to work together. Not just 10%. Everybody. Everybody has a ministry. Everybody have something they can contribute because God has given it to you. You know, I, I'm going to do this real quick. I need six people. I need six people. Take that one. 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 You know, take that one. I got one left. Monique, Monique, take it. Okay. <laughs> now, now, I got a story, and in this particular story, each one of you have a gift. Amen. So, in this story. There was, uh, and, I, and I'll be, I'll be, I'll be the waiter. I'll be the server. And this guy had desserts, and he was bringing it to the table. That even as he was bringing it desserts to the table, he tripped and fell, and the desserts went on the floor. As the desserts went on the floor, who has mercy, or who has? Which one do you have? Mercy, yeah. Don't feel bad. Anybody could have done that. You hear what she said? She has mercy. Don't feel bad. Anybody could have done that. Amen, amen. Somebody else. Hey, let me help you clean that up. Yeah. You have what gift? The gift of service. The gift of service? You want to help me clean it up?
You have the gift of expectation. Don't worry about it. From now on, let's just serve the dessert first and put it in the middle of the table so it won't fall off. Don't worry about it. I done dropped it all on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you're not careful. Oh, that's what happens when I'm not careful. In teaching, the reason it fell was it was too heavy on one side. So what you want to do is balance it and put it in the middle. Hey, man. Hey, man. When you had the gift of? Uh, 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 buy it. Don't worry about it. I have some extra money. I'll buy you a new dessert. Hey, man. He's going to buy me some dessert. I'm hanging with you. Hey, dessert. man. <laughs> I think you have the gift of uh, admin administration. Jim, get the mop. Sue, pick up the plate. Oh, right. Mary, you go fix some more dessert. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, give them a hand, praise. That's just an example of how the gifts can work in the church, amen? And, 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 and it's really funny, since we've been doing this, and I've been listening to different folks talk, I can almost tell what gift they have. Just by the instructions, how they talk with someone else, how they give the instructions to somebody else, even how some folks run some people, folks the wrong way, I go, mmm, you are, you believe in mercy, that other person is an administrator, mmm. You know, or, or somebody comes up and says, come on, let's pray. Oh my, you're a prophet, you want to pray, you know, but I'm going through something, but yet they're going to pray with me. So, so you heard how the gifts work when we began to work them all within the church. You know, um, yeah, I dropped the, the desserts. Yeah, I was, I, I'm, I'm hurting. I was hurting, you know, but I got some good information. You know, uh, especially when the teacher came along and told me I didn't have it on the tray right. You know, so, 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 but, but it was great. And that's kind of where I want to go with the church, that we all know where our gifts are, so we all know how to step in to help one another. Amen? Amen? Come on, give God a hand praise. That, that's, that's my, my sermon for today. That, that's where I'm hoping that you get excited. I'm hoping that you learned something today that when you begin to look at your gift, you begin to understand where you need to work within the ministry. Amen? God has a place for everyone. Everyone is, is a part of his body. Everyone. We all have something to do with Christ. This has been another episode of This Is Your Season. To find out more about Grace and Mercy Baptist Church, please contact us by calling 860 343 7335 or writing us at Grace and Mercy Baptist Church, P.O. Box 2301, Middletown, Connecticut 06457. We are currently located at 13 Waverly Ave in Portland, Connecticut. You can also find us on the web at gracemercyministries.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook slash Grace Mercy Church. We hope to see you soon. Thank you for enjoying our program and have a blessed day.